Barn is the author of How to Get Your Cat to Do What You Want and How to Get Your Dog to Do What You Want. He's here to answer all your pet and animal questions. And now, Warren Eckstein. Are you being conned by your chihuahua? Does your calico have you crazed? Is your beagle acting a bit belligerent? Well, if you love animals, care about wildlife and the environment, and want to really know how your dogs and cats thinking and why they do some of the things they do, stay tuned because once again, right here, right now, it is time for the Pet Show, America's first and only real pet psychology, training, behavior, and of course, pet lifestyle shows. Hop up on my couch. Ah, bring those furry little buddies with you folks because it is that time once again to let the animal analyzing begin. Hey, good morning, everybody. I'm Warren Eckstein. This is The Pet Show, the place where we absolutely, positively, never a doubt about it, love, adore, and as I stress every single week, respect pets and animals as much as you do. By the way, if you'd like to join me on the Evergrowing Pet Show family, if you want to find out why your dog doesn't like the next door neighbor, why your backyard has holes and it looks like a moonscape, why your cat looks at the litter box and says, use it yourself, he's not eating his food, your dog is jumping, your cat is scratching, you don't know what to do, well, now you do. You can give me a call. I will help you cope with your pet's behavior, more than likely help your pets cope with you. And by the way, if you happen to be a new listener or a regular listener to the Pet Show, it doesn't make any difference. Everyone, I mean everyone, that calls into my show today and does in fact get through to me live on the air will be getting an amazing gift. Don't get excited. It's not for you. It's for that beautiful, gorgeous, adorable dog or cat looking up at you with those eyes as I speak. Everyone who calls in and gets through to me live will get a great gift. And if you knew, you might not be aware, but many of the items I give away on the show are worth 25, 35, 40 bucks and more. So I will answer your pet and animal questions. And at the same time, a great gift will be arriving at your home for your best friend. Again, the phone number here at the Pet Show, if you'd like to join me, 866-870-KRLA. That's 866-870-KRLA. Or if you're more of a numbers person, that's 866 870 866-870-5752, that is the way to get through. Plenty of time for your calls, lots of great stuff to give away as well. Again, that number, 866-870-KRLA, that is the way to get through. Hey, let me tell you what I got planned for today's show. <laughs> if you're a regular listener, it makes no difference what I have planned for today's show. You know by now, I never get through it all because, because your questions and comments always come first. But I want to share this with you. Dogs know, that's right, dogs know when people are lying to them and react accordingly. If you mislead your dog, they will learn not to trust you. Why you should never lie to your dog's coming. If I know what you're saying, how does my dog know I'm lying? Well, I'll tell you that, and I'll prove it to you when we come back. Also, when you're snacking, and I get the same thing, you're sitting around, you're eating popcorn, you're eating chips, whatever you're eating, and your dog or cat looks up with those adoring eyes, is it hard to say no? It sure is hard to say no, but... Some of the snacks you enjoy could be harmful or even deadly for your dogs and cats. So today we're going to take a look at some common foods you should never share with your pets. And part of that reason is 4th of July week coming up. A lot of people having parties, barbecues, a lot of things out there that can be dangerous for your dogs and cats. And from last week, yeah, from last week, we never got to it. Cats gone wild. And, you know, I get this call all the time. If you have a cat, listen to me. Why does some normally mellow, really nice cats all of a sudden freak out for no apparent reason? I'll share the secrets coming up. Plenty of time for your questions and comments. As I said, lots of great pet stuff to give away. So if your pet is jumping, humping, digging, not housebroken, chewing, suffering with separation anxiety, your dachshund's depressed, hates other dogs, and some people take your dog for a nice leisurely walk. He sees another dog and he turns into Cujo. Or you should believe that your dog's job is to, to literally, literally chase anything that moves. Give me a call. Phone number here, 866-870-KRLA. 866-870-5752. That is the way to get through. Plenty of time for your calls. I see the phones are already jam-packed. Plenty of time for your calls. Lots of great stuff to give away as well. Now, if you're out of the listening area and you're not listening, if you have friends that are, you can always listen to the show and watch the show as I do it at Facebook. Just simply go to facebook.com slash Warren Pet. 
facebook.com slash Warren Pett. You can ask some questions there as well. I try to uh, give some advice also. Again, that's facebook.com slash Warren Pett. The phone number here, 866-870-KRLA. So let me tell you about my morning, guys. I posted it on Facebook. So take it easy with me today. Every Saturday, you guys know I drive in from beautiful Santa Monica to Glendale to the studios. I always stop at Yum Yum Donuts on Pico Boulevard in Santa Monica to pick up a dozen donuts for the crew. They got to eat too, right? So this morning, I pull into the same Dunkin', uh, Dunkin', the same Yum Yum Donuts I always pull into, only this time my car's in the shop, so I borrowed the lovely Denise's car, which, by the way, happens to be a 1993 Mitsubishi where you got to lock it with a key and unlock it with a key, which I'm totally unused to. So I go into Yum Yum Donuts, the same one I go to. I've been going to it for the last 12, 13 years. Go in there, I get my dozen donuts, walk outside to get back in the car, and I realized that I locked my keys and my phone in Denise's car. Now, the donut shop's about a mile and a half, two miles away from my house. So what I did is I went back into the donut shop and saw the girl who just sold me the donuts, just sold them to me five minutes ago. I said, listen, can I use your phone or anybody's phone just to call AAA so they can come down and unlock my car and I can head to the studio? And she looks at me square in the eyes and goes, no. Now, this girl's been serving me for at least five years. I've been going there, as I said, for 12, 13, 14 years. Every week, buy a dozen donuts, bring it in. During the week, it's near my house, so I stop in. And she said, no, I can't use her phone. So from this point further, instead of yum yum, my mantra is going to be Duncan. Just saying. 866-870-KRLA, the phone number, 866-870-575. To only I could have trouble with a donut shop. By the way, I did make it to the studio. I ran a mile and a half to the house, a mile and a half back, hopped in Denise's car, got the extra keys, and here I am, donuts in hand. But let me just tell the crew, I'm telling you right now, Alex, don't expect yum yum next week. It's going to be, it's going to be Dunkin' or it's going to be some other donut, but it's certainly not going to be yum yum donuts next week. 866-870-KRLA, the phone number, the donut capades here on the Pet Show. Let me get right to the phone lines here. With lots of, oh, by the way, the question of the day, let me forget. The question of the day is, do you lie to your pets? You know you do. How many of you look at your dog or cat and say, hey, sweetie, I'll be right back, knowing that you're going away for eight hours? How many? How many? How many of you say, oh, this is really delicious when you've never tasted it? How many of you really lie to your dogs? I want to know. Give me a call. 866-870-KRLA, the phone number. 866-870-5752. Great calls. Let me start out in Burbank with, uh, with my friend, Andrew. Hey, Andrew, welcome to the pet show. Yeah, yeah, good morning. Good morning. How are you today? I'm doing well, and uh, I'm sorry about your donut escapade. I'm telling you, only, uh, only I can have a problem in a donut store. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm hoping you can uh, save me from a piddly pooch. A piddly pooch? Uh, how, how old is your pooch, Andrew? Uh, maybe about three years old. Uh, my wife got it from a local shelter. Great dog, female. It's, uh, she's a uh, Jack Russell Terrier mix, but whenever I go to pet her, like I come home from work and she's standing there and I, I reach down to pet her, she always piddles. And I'm like, and so what that does to me, it makes me not want to pay any attention to her at all because I don't want to have to clean up the mess. Yeah, well, let me ask you a question, Andrew. What if, what if I were to walk in the house? What if, what if a neighbor or a friend of yours was to walk in the house or a woman was to walk in the house? Is it just you? Uh, pretty much it, it's me. It was my son for a while, but he doesn't live with us anymore. But no, when neighbors come in or family friends she hasn't seen in a while, she'll bark at them, but then she settles down. Does she seem excited uh, when she sees you? Does she seem happy when she sees you? Fearful when she sees you? What kind of a reaction does she get? I mean, is the tail between the legs? Is she a little fearful or is she real happy to see you when you come home? Yeah, you know what? When I come home, she seems like generally happy, but when I pay attention to her or look down at her and I reach my hand down to pet her, then she seems fearful, and that's when she piddles. Okay, it's, you know, we don't, we don't know the background on the dog. We don't know if maybe she was abused or taken away by a man. Maybe she associates you coming in the house, even though she's been there for a while with being taken away. Could be any number of reasons. However, the resolution is really pretty simple. What I'm going to recommend you do, because she does get excited as soon as you come in, we want to distract her a little bit. Because if we were to say no, what we're going to do is just create more anxiety and nerves on her part, which is going to make her pee more. So my preference at this point would be find an item that the dog absolutely loves. Whatever this little Jack Russell terrorist loves doesn't make any difference. A Frisbee, a tennis ball, whatever. And keep that in the car. When you walk in the house, 
don't say a word, hand her the toy. And then after five or 10 minutes or six minutes, whatever it is, take it away. She's all with the initial exuberant excitement that you are there. And at that point, she'll stop peeing. So that's the recommendation. Right now, she gets so excited when she sees you, either in a negative or exciting way. I don't know. I haven't seen her. But the best way to resolve it is not to pay any attention, negative or positive attention. Give her the special toy. Walk past her. And after she calms down for a few minutes, then you can give her the greeting you both want. All right. You know what? I can do that. She certainly loves a little squeaky thing, so I can get one special to me. Yeah, and just make sure just car. make sure at night you put it back in the car so when you walk in the next day, you're taking it from the car to the house. So she's looking. Actually, after a couple of days, she'll be looking for the new toy and not so much excited about seeing you. You know what? I'm going to do that because it'll also save me on my paper towel cost. Well, then, you know, besides your, paper, besides your paper towel cost, here's what I'm going to do. I am going to put you on hold, and I am going to send you, because if she does piddle a little bit, it's really important that you get rid of the scent, otherwise it can entice her to pee again. So I am going to send you a great gift certificate for kids and pets stain and odor remover. There is, is nothing better on the market to clean up. We'll talk about that a little bit later. Great call, by the way. You give that, and bless you for adopting this. Uh, I call them Jack Russell Terrace, but they're beautiful dogs. 866-870-KRLA, 866-870-5752. Todd in Torrance, Dennis in Yorba Linda, uh, Sylvia in Sun Valley, Sandra in the great state of Maryland. We'll get to all your calls. Just be real patient with me. I promise I will get to them. As you know, last Sunday, I spent the day at an incredible place, Mead Canine Rescue, which is a great organization, actually based in, uh, I guess it's kind of like Calabasas, Malibu, uh, Cornell, all in that area around Malibu Lake. And uh, let me, I'm going to hold this up for those people that are watching on Facebook. These are two of the dogs that I met. Okay, these are two older dogs that I met while I was there. Um, if you can see it on Facebook, I don't know exactly how old they are, a little bit shown mixes. Um, and they really were in dire straits for home. I'm happy to say that they now have a home. However, if you would like to help a great organization, check out this website, meadcaninerescue.org, meadcaninerescue.org. They have some dogs that, that just need a home, even temporarily, they're older, they might be a little challenge, but check it out, meadcaninerescue.org. Glad those two dogs found them. It was a great event, by the way. I'm sorry. Uh, uh, it was busy, too, so maybe I'll have more there, and I can invite you guys to come out and, and check it out. 866-870-KRLA, the phone number, 866-870-5752. Let me do this. I want to take a break. Todd, you'll be next. Dennis, Sylvia, Sandra, Marge, lots of great stuff to give away. I got my own hugs and kisses. I'll give you a list when we come back. But right, uh, Just in case some of you may have forgot, Wednesday's the 4th of July. So throughout today's show, you know I'm a patriot, so we're going to be playing some great patriotic music. Uh, for our bumper music uh, on today's show. And, uh, you know, 4th of July, I love the 4th of July. Every year I do the same thing. No big thing, no big barbecues. Denise and I go down to Main Street in Santa Monica and watch a little, little, local, uh, little local parade. It's just amazing to see all the little groups from Santa Monica marching along. And you support your little hometown parades as well. I mean, it's the 4th of July. Uh, that's just the way I feel. It's the 4th of July. It's the birthday of the country. I'm going to go out and celebrate. 866-870-KRLA, the phone number. Did you know, did you know that people, people who talk to their pets are actually smarter than those who don't? Your habit of talking to your dog or cat or even your plants or any inanimate object for that matter is a sign of intelligence. Man, I must be a genius. 866 866-870- 8 70 KRLA, the phone number. Why are you laughing, Alex? Let me get back to the phone right now. Let me go to a, we're going to go to Torrance and uh, Todd. And now we got Dennis, Sylvia, Sandra, Marge. We'll get to your calls, I promise. Uh, oh, let me tell you what I'm giving away on today's show. I'll be giving away hugs and kisses, vitamin, mineral supplement treats. By the way, those are my own. Lucy Pet Formers for Life Pet Food. Kids and Pets Stain and Odor Remover. Those amazing t-shirts that say none of my friends walk upright. Copies of my behavior books. Lucy Pet's Cat's Incredible Litter, Authors of Gold, Mushroom Max, and Hemp Seed Oil for Allergy, Calming, Immune, and Joint. Everyone who calls in and gets through to me live will be getting one of those gifts for their best friend. All right, back to the busy phone lines here. We're going to go to Torrance. I mean, Todd and Torrance. Hey, Todd and Torrance, how are you? Hi, sir. Thank you for taking my call. Hey, it's my pleasure. What's up? So, I have three dogs, uh, two males, one female. Uh, we've recently put a lot of time and effort and money into our new backyard, new grass, and you can imagine what the female urine is uh, doing to that. So my question is, how can I, I guess, naturally uh, prevent her urine from burning my grass? 
uh, without putting harmful chemicals in her. I'm, I've looked into the uh, pH neutralizers, but I've read that those can also cause crystals in her urine tract. Uh, I am trying something called Lawn Guard by Foster and Smith. Do you have any better recommendations? I do. I do. I'm just, I don't know why I can't think of the name of it. I'm sure Denise will write in with the name of it. I know she's listening, but my good friends over at Nature Vet, they have a product. I use it myself. In other words, it doesn't prevent the lawn from turning yellow, but as soon as the dog goes on the lawn, you can spray this. It brings the color right back to the lawn and it works mm -hmm. amazing. Um, it's made by Nature Vet. I'm just not okay. thinking of the name of the product off my, off the top of my head. Um, I will, Grass saver. That's it. Thank you. Thank you. Alex, you do listen to the show. Alex does listen to the show. It's called Grass Saver. It's made by Nature Vet. Um, you can go to naturevet.com. Uh, I don't know if we have it. It might be on my website. You can check out thepetshow.com or send me an email. Uh, but you know what? Here's what I'm going to do, Todd. And, you know, I, generally we don't give this away, Suzette. So we're going to give away some Grass Saver uh, to Todd. We're going to send you some, Todd. How's that? Awesome. Awesome. Uh, do, but real quick, do you happen to... Uh, can you suggest anything that might cut it off at the past? I guess uh, something that I could give her so that when she does. I, you know, I hate messing up with the system. In other words, I really do. As long as she's drinking enough water, if a urine is normal, I would make sure you check with your vet, make sure her urine is not normal. I mean, is normal. If it's not, maybe he can adjust that a little bit. But right now, listen, if you have a backyard and you have dogs, there are going to be some spots, but this, uh, this grass saver can make all the difference in the world. I use it pretty consistently. Okay. What, what, try that. what type of dogs do you have, Todd? I have uh, a Jack Russell mix, uh, a, a mutt, and wait, wait, did girl. you say did you say mutt? Yeah, a true mutt. We, uh, no, no, we call them, we call them generic dogs. Generic dogs. Generic okay. dogs. There you go. <laughs> and then the third one is a uh, a pit doby mix. She's a sweetheart. All rescues. Yes. Ah, uh, bless you, Todd. Anyway, listen, don't go anywhere. I'm going to put you on hold, and uh, Suzette will pick up. And Suzette, we're sending him the Grass Saver by Nature Vet. I don't usually give that away, but we'll get some out to you. As I said, I use it on a pretty consistent basis. 866-870-KRLA, the phone number, 866-870-5752. Hey, Dennis and your Belinda, welcome to the show. Thank you very much, Warren. I have a quick question for you. One dog or two? A dozen. What do you mean one or two? A dozen. <laughs> well, thank you. Hi. We're just we're concerned about the expenses, grooming expenses, uh, vet expenses, all the other all the other responsibilities that come along with the dog. Well, we're let me ask you a question. Stop. Give me give me your family. What your family consist of? We have uh, three people: uh, my wife and I, and my daughter. How old is your daughter? Twenty-four. Oh, so she's not a kid anymore. No, she's not, and she may be moving out soon. So soon it will be just the two of us. I, let me ask you a question. Did you grow up with dogs? Yes, I did. Big, small, medium, long hair, short hair? Big German cheddar. <laughs> you said that on purpose, right? Yes. But, my wife got tired of the hair. But listen, if you, gave, if you gave the dog my hugs and kisses, you wouldn't have to worry about that. Would you consider another German shepherd? Well, I would, but she wouldn't, and she's really concerned about the shedding. You know, almost would, all dogs, all dogs are going to shed except if, you know, poodles and Portuguese water dogs that have uh, uh, hair versus fur. So they're all going to shed, but you can keep the shedding down to a bare minimum. So I was going to recommend if you want to, uh, if you're looking for a shepherd, uh, my good friend, in fact, I'm having dinner with them tonight. My good friends over at a West Side German Shepherd have some incredible dogs for adoption. They're not all purebreds either. But if your wife is really concerned about hair, is it allergies or she doesn't like the hair around the house? It's the allergies for the most part. Okay, then you're going to have to think about a breed like a, a, a Bichon Frise, a, a Maltese, a, a Portuguese water dog, uh, or, or a poodle, one of the dogs with fur. Now, a lot, a lot of guys think poodles are foo-foo dogs. Let me tell you, I trained poodles for Schutzhund or police work when I was stationed in Europe. They're amazing dogs. So you may want to consider, and there are lots of poodles that are available for adoption, and get the standard poodle if you want a larger dog. So my feeling is that if, if you're really concerned about the shedding, then at that point, and, and I bless you for adopting, I would say get two dogs that have been groomed, living together for life, get two, and uh, if you can adopt two dogs, Dogs that have fur, uh, hair versus fur, your shedding is going to be down to a bare minimum. But also remember this, even if the dog does have hair 
and you get the dog on a good solid diet and you give them a supplement like the hugs and kisses with lecithin, that shedding is going to be down uh, to a bare minimum. So that's a choice you guys are going to have to make. But literally, uh, the shelters are full. The rescues are full. If you want a German Shepherd, West Side German Shepherd, a great place to check into. Or even you're down in Orange County, I believe, or Orange County German Shepherd Rescue, also a great organization. Um, but if your wife is totally against it, then at that point, I would consider maybe looking for a terrier or, or a poodle type dog that, that's going to shed a lot less. Sounds good. I let, you're going to let me know when you get a dog, right? Absolutely. Thank you very oh, much. Don't go anywhere. In the meantime, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put you on hold, and I'm going to send you a jar of my Hugs and Kisses supplements. So no matter what type of dog you get, the shedding will be kept to a bare minimum. They do have to shed, but it's kept to a bare minimum. So we'll send you that, and I appreciate the phone call. Now, people often ask me, why do some dogs shed and other dogs are, are considered shedless? Well, breeds like the Poodle, the Portuguese Water Dog, the American Water Spaniel, the Irish Water Spaniel, they don't have fur. They have hair like we do. So they shed a little bit here, a little bit there, but they don't shed fur like other dogs. So if there's allergies involved, uh, that's something you might want to take into consideration. Adopting two dogs or two Poodles, I mean, I just... I had two for adoption last week. They're a little bit older, but thank goodness they found a home. 866-870-KRLA, the phone number, 866-870-5752. We can take another break. When we come back, we got Sylvia in Sun Valley, Sandra in Maryland, Marge in Thousand Oaks, Erica in Stevens Ranch, and we got Jonathan in North Hollywood. We're going to get to all your calls, plenty of time. Uh, the question of the day, uh, I forget to ask it, so bring it up, will you? Do you lie to your dogs? You know you lie to your dogs and cats. You know that you're not always truthful with your dogs or cats. You say, yeah, I'm going to get you the special food. I'm going to be right back. Wait till grandma. Comes. You, know, you know you lie to your pets. So that's the question of the day. Do you lie to your dogs and cats? I want to know. Give me a call. 866-870-KRLA. 866-870-5752. That is the way to get to the lie. 866-870-KRLA, uh, the phone number. The phones are jam-packed. We're going to get to all your phone calls. Let me just share this with you. Mayors across the country are coming together to make their cities more pet friendly. And three of them want some extra cash to further their pro-pet initiatives. Here's how the idea started. In January, the United States Conference of Mayors, the official nonpartisan organization for cities of 30,000 or more, and Mars Corporation launched a nationwide survey to determine what resources and support a city would need to make its community more pet friendly. Here's what they suggested food facility upgrades and training for shelters, improved outdoor public amenities for dogs and other pets, support for local pet adoption, microchipping and spay and neuter programs, education for business owners on the benefits of establishing a pet friendly policies, plus amenities in retail, restaurant and other business settings. It's a start. The mayors are talking about it. It's a start. Hello, Los Angeles mayors. How about you? 866-870-KRLA, the phone number. Sylvia, Sun Valley, welcome to the Pet Show. Hey, how are you doing? I'm doing super. How um, about yourself? Yeah, I'm sorry. A large dog, German Shepherd, uh, wanted to know um, what would be a good shampoo for him. And then I heard you talking about that Lucy's dog food. I was wondering if it smells coming from the inside. So she smells, and I was wondering about a good shampoo and um, something to use for him. Well, let me ask you a question. Is, is the dog itchy? Is the dog scratching? Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, no fleas or fleas that you don't know? No. No fleas at all? No, none. Okay, so in other words, yeah, you know, the, the type of food that you're feeding your dog or your cat can really make a difference in the condition of their skin. Um, and that's really important to, to know. So changing the food to, uh, to uh, Lucy Pet Formas for Life might be a great idea for you to, to approach. Uh, have, you haven't tried it yet? No, we haven't, and he swims a lot, too. Okay, well, here, how often do you bathe him? Not real often. Okay, well, let me tell you something. About once okay? a month or so. I have to assume, I may be wrong, but I'm assuming that your swimming pool has chlorine? Yep. Okay, there's nothing more drying for skin than chlorine. So if you have a dog that swims in a pool with chlorine, what you need to do is when the dog gets out of the pool, you need to rinse them off with fresh water. That would be really, really important, okay? So make sure you rinse them with fresh water. You don't need to use all kinds of shampoo to bathe them because if you bathe the dog, sometimes you can dry out the skin more. So here's what I'm going to do for you because I love, you know, I'm a big German Shepherd fanatic. What's your dog's name, by the way? Uh, Zar. What's your dog's name, Zar? Zar. Okay, what I'm going to do 
Here's what I want you to do. When Zar gets out of the pool, I want you to rinse him down with some cool, fresh water. And then what I'm going to do is I am going to send you some Lucy Pet Formulas for Life pet food. I want you to start making the transition gradually. Start adding the Lucy Pet food into the food you're feeding him. Start removing the food you're feeding him and adding more of the Lucy Pet Formulas for Life, okay? That should make a difference with the skin and coat. But I think the problem is for you is too much chlorine is drying the skin out and that's making the dog very, very itchy and it might even make the dog smell a little bit. Okay, that sounds great. Um, and how, how do you do that? One fourth to his regular stuff? Because we feed him a Costco brand with lamb and rice and things like that. Okay, so what you would do is take the Lucy Pet Formas for Life and maybe just in maybe add maybe, uh, let's say, uh, one quarter of what you feed him. Okay, so one right. quart is the new food. I would do that for a couple of days and then maybe just a little bit more, then a little bit more until you make the, the transition should be about a week and a half to two weeks. Okay. But the other question I had for initially was, um, how often is too often to, to wash a dog? Uh, you, know, you know, it depends on the dog, but a lot of people overbay their dogs, which really dries out the skin. You want to use a really good quality shampoo. That's important. I use Lucy Pet Forms for Life shampoo on my own dog. So you want to use a really good shampoo. That's important. I generally recommend that you, know, you don't bathe your dog more than once a week. Uh, and that's why I'm recommending in your case that you just rinse them off with some cool water. Okay, sounds good. Is oatmeal shampoo okay? Oatmeal shampoo is fine. It might help. It might soothe the skin a little bit as well. All right, thank you so much. Hey, don't, Have a nice rest of the day. Enjoy your holiday. Oh, uh, you too, Ned. Don't go anywhere. I'm going to put you on hold, and the lovely Suzette's going to get your name and address, and we are going to send you some samples of Lucy Pet Formulas for Life Pet Food. A lot of people do ask me that question, by the way, is, Warren, how often should I bathe my dog? And sometimes I joke and say, well, if the dog walks in the room and you got to walk out because he stinks that much. But very often, people will overbathe their dog. And I use human shampoo, which is not always a good thing to do. It can dry them out. Um, so you want to use a really good quality shampoo. Nothing wrong with oatmeal shampoo either. And uh, make that switch with the Lucy Pet Form Slide Pet Food gradually, and you'll start noticing some changes. All right, let me take another call right here. Let me go to Sandra in the great state of Maryland. Hey, Sandra, welcome to the show. Hi, Sandra. Did we lose Sandra in Maryland? Oh, Sandra, you're not there. Okay, sorry, Sandra. Phone number here at the Pet Show, 866-870-KRLA, 866-870-5752. Uh, I'm going to take a quick break. When I come back, we've got Erica, Jonathan, Irene. We're going to get to your calls. I still got lots of great stuff to give away. 866-870-KRLA, the phone number, 866-870-5752. Or if you'd rather watch how I do this show, it's kind of interesting. I just talk to you guys, look at your questions. You can always watch it on facebook.com slash Warren Pet, facebook.com slash Warren Pet. And just a reminder, I am now on Twitter, and it's just Twitter at Warren Eckstein, Twitter at Warren Eckstein, YouTube, Facebook. I'm all over the place now. I am really getting into the, the 21st century. Is that what we're in there right now? Getting into I, I, thank you. A little late to the game, Alex says. 866-870-KRLA, the phone number, 866-870-5752. Still coming up on today's show. Dogs know when you're lying to them. You might be able to fool me. You can lie to me, but don't lie to your dog. I'll tell you why, and I'll prove it to you that they know when you're lying coming up. And we are back on this pet show on this 4th of July week. I'm Warren Eckstein. The phone number 866-870-KRLA, 866-870-5752. Uh, Sherry, Sandra, Irene, Jonathan, we're going to get to all your calls. Lots of great stuff to give away. Be patient with me. We have an old, whole other hour and 15 minutes to go, so I will get to your calls. And I still some of the best prizes to give away. I still got hugs and kisses to give away, Lucy Pet Food, T-shirts, books, Cats Incredible. By the way, those T-shirts that say none of my friends walk upright, they're available at my website, thepetshow.com. And did I mention that they're like 15 bucks and they like the money goes to help the Hugs and Kisses Animal Fund. So check it out. You love wearing these T-shirts. People always get comments. It says, none of my friends walk up right. Check them out at thepetshow.com. Let me get back to the busy phone lines here. Uh, I guess it was uh, um, Sandra in Bishopville, Maryland. Hey, Sandra. Welcome to the show. Hi there. I don't know what happened. I'm sorry. You hung up on me, Sandra. You know you did. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you for letting me call back in and, and pushing me to the front of the line a little. That's okay. What can I do so, to help let you? let me out? tell you. I, I listen to you, and then I call my friends and tell them things about their dog, and I have to call my friend who has a rug shampoo in her hand all the time because these dogs go to the bathroom in her house. Oh. But anyway, so 
I have Holly the Rain, who is a rescue, and she is a cockapoo. Wonderful dog. She likes to lick, loves to lick porches and stuff that, like, have pollen on them. And then, of course, later on, we throw up. And so when I take her out, we can't, like, just sit on a porch somewhere. She licks everything on every porch to death. Let me ask you a question, okay? Was, uh-huh. this, was this a uh-huh. rescue dog? Yes. How old was she when you but got her? But I know her whole history. Okay, how old was she when you got her? Seven. Seven years? Uh-huh, and she's going to be 14 soon, but she's still like a puppy. Uh, no, I understand that. But in other words, the licking, is it something that started recently or has it been going on for a long, long time? You know, I think it's probably been going on for a long, long time. Uh, at 14? 14... I mean, it didn't just start like three or four years ago. Okay, at four... it just, but at this I age... I it more. At mm-hmm. this age, it's very common if a dog, and, and, you know, 85 to 90% of dogs will develop some type of dental or periodontal disease by the time they're three or four years old. So if you have a dog mm-hmm. that's excessively licking, the first thing you want to do is make sure that the teeth and the gums are in good shape, because if they're not... I'm already ahead of you, buddy. Good. I'm, glad, go I'm glad to hear that. So you've had the, you've had the teeth checked? Yeah. Oh, yeah. She just, um, it was the first time ever that she had tartar. And, and they had to put her in a light sleep. And okay. I was worried because okay, so, you know, she's getting a little older. Yeah, at 14 years old. Yeah, everything's great. Okay, so let's, let's go to another direction, okay? Mm-hmm. You've had the dog for a lot of years. You know, how many, do you remember how many puppies were in the litter? No, because I wouldn't have known that because she was rescued. I just know about the people that had her before me. And the people that had her before you, why did they give her up? Well, what happened was the man bought her for his wife who was dying of cancer, and she did. And then he remarried, I don't know, any time frame. And then he died. So, and, but what he, he, the second person he married was, um, I call her the cat lady, because she had two cats. And Holly loves cats. Loves, you know, she's good. But um, I don't know any other story. Okay, so here's here's what I'm thinking, okay? This puppy, mm-hmm. this puppy came from whatever size litter. I'm assuming the puppy came from a large litter. The first thing mm-hmm. a mother dog does when a puppy is born is lick them. Licking mm-hmm. from a dog's point of view Aww. is like us scratching our head, sucking our thumb. It's a comfort feeling. It makes us feel better about that makes them feel better about themselves. So when you have mm-hmm. a dog that is licking excessively, especially a dog at this age that has gone from mm-hmm. one home, maybe a shelter to a home, to another home, lost the, the wife, lost the husband. Well, can- it just went from um, the home. See, uh, we have a, the breeder, I mean, the groomer of Holly was my friend. Yeah, no, it's not, so that's, that's, but that's, that's the point I'm making here is the dog has already yeah. lost two people that it loved. So it would not be yeah. unusual when the dog is out on the porch, the dog may feel a little mm-hmm. insecure for whatever reason, even though he knows he's loved. And that excessive mm-hmm. licking may be a way of calming himself down. The only thing I'm going right. to recommend right. is the teeth and the gums are in good shape. What I would try mm-hmm. to do is find a specific item in your house that the dog loves and only give that to him when he's in the backyard with you. Okay. Right, right. Or on the porch. On the porch with you. That, that let's try that. You know, yeah. I, I, I got to move on. Let's try yeah. that for a week or so. Let's see if that doesn't make a difference. But at 14 years old, sometimes they get a little senile. That could be the licking as well. But anyway, listen, <laughs> follow my advice. Give me a call back in a week because I'm going to put you on hold and I want to send you something for your dog. We're going to send you an older dog. We're going to send you some authors who go to keep those hips and joints in the best shape ever. 866-870-KRLA, the phone number. You know, it's time for me. And we are back on the pet show on this 4th of July week. So looking forward to the Main Street Parade in downtown Stanton. I'm like, all right, it's not New York City where I grew up, but it's, it's nice. Small town parade. I really like it. And we're going to break for the top of the hour just for a minute or two. And we come back, be patient. We've got some great gifts. Erica in Stevenson Ranch. Jonathan in North Hollywood with your German Shepherd. Uh, Irene in Sunland. Jay in Van Nuys. Sherry in Bakersfield. We're going to get to all your calls. So we've got lots of great stuff to give away. Plenty of time for your calls. The phone number here, 866 870 KRLA 866-870-5752. Now, it's an interesting question of the day because there's a new study that says that dogs are totally aware of people that lie to them and don't trust people that lie to them. So we're going to talk about that when we come back. We're going to answer all of your pet and animal questions. And my question of the day is pretty simple. Come on, be honest with me, folks. How many of you actually lie to your dogs and cats? You know you do. 
look me square in the eyes and tell me that you don't tell your dog when you leave, you'll be right back. Or I'm going to bring you something special. Or I'll get you a doggy bag from the restaurant and you come home with nothing. How many of you lie to your dog? I want to know. 866-870-KRLA, the phone number. Quick break, then right back at you. I'm Warren Eckstein. This is The Pet Show. Remember your pets. Try to stump them, but we haven't yet. Dog is barking. Your cat is the fox. Your ferret's chewed up all your favorite socks. You should know how to get inside your pet's head. Maybe it is you who needs to be trained instead. As a, as a matter of fact, there's a, there's a couple of people I would love to put a harness, a harness and a leash on and teach them how to behave properly. I'm not saying anything else. I, I didn't mean you, Alex, I promise. 866-870-KRLA, the phone number. 866-870-5752. That is the way to get through. Plenty of time for your calls. Lots of great stuff to give away. It's true, folks. According to a brand new study, Scientists and colleagues want to know if a dog would trust the person to lie to them. They did all kinds of tests and they found that dogs would use their previous experience to know that a person was unreliable if that person lied to them before. Dogs also control how other people interact with their guardians and the dogs would not take a treat from the people who behaved in a bad or rude way towards their owners. Uh, reported in neuroscience and biobehavioral reviews, only stuff that I read, folks. Uh, dogs showed a good understanding of social rules. They avoided the people who mistreated their other people. So it's not just them. In other words, if you lie or mistreat a guardian, the dog is going to react accordingly to you. There's a commercial on TV that kind of reminds me of that right now. Do you lie to your pets? I want to know. Give me a call, 866-870-KRLA. That is the phone number. Let's get back to the busy phone lines here. Plenty of time for your calls. Lots of great stuff to give away. And I want to know if you lie to your dogs. Erica, Stevenson Ranch. Do you lie to your pets, Erica? Do you lie to them? Um, no, I don't. And to answer your question about my departure, they know when they get up in the morning whether I'm leaving during the day or not. They sense it. Uh, so I never say one word when I leave. But when I come home, they get, I make up for all the loving they didn't have the previous hours. You know, one of the amazing things about dogs is, is they, they, they understand exactly how to make us feel guilty. Well, I don't really feel guilty because uh, uh, I really have nothing to do with them being depressed. They, I never tell them I'm going. They just know. Of course they know you're going because you grab the keys to your car. You grab no, your car. No, they know it way ahead of time. Before you even grab your keys? In other words, so let me see if I understand this. So Erica in Stevenson Ranch, it's 7 o'clock on Monday morning. Erica is stretching. She's getting out of bed. She's rising up. Doesn't say a word. Nothing to the dogs whatsoever. And they know. Leaving, and no. they And they know you're leaving. Yes, they do. Listen, they, I, listen. Yes, they do. They become depressed, and I try to sneak out, but they will not keep one eye off. <laughs> they, want, they want their mommy. Of course they do. So what's your question for me today? Uh, yes, what I would like to ask. I have always given my dogs uh, uh, bottled water, but I understand. Uh, I know something about the alkaline water, and I would like to switch them over to that. It's uh, the alkaline water and electrolytes. I believe it does not have any acid at all, and it's pH 9.5 and 65 alkaline. But let me just uh, listen, Erica. You are so far above my pay grade here. In other uh, words, in other words, I, I I give my dogs. My dog, I give Cisco filtered water, not bottled water, filtered water. And I've been giving my dogs filtered water for God knows how many years, 20 years at least. Um, what kind of water? I'm sorry. I don't know what, what you were saying. What kind of water? Filtered. I have a filter on my sink that filters the water, takes the chlorine out, takes any of the impurities out. That's the water I use for my own pets. Very often, you know, you, if you think about the way dogs were brought up, they were brought up drinking water from, you know, puddles, drinking water from creeks, drinking water. So I don't necessarily know if giving them uh, bottled water 
or alkaline water, unless of course you're out and, and walking with them, uh, is necessarily as good as giving them uh, just some filtered water, which might have some of the things that help with their immune system as well. So I'm not sure about that. And I, I don't know. And I, I don't want to answer your question. If I'm not sure, I just let you know that for all the years I give my dogs uh, filtered water uh, right out of the sink because I have a filter built in there. But in terms of alkaline water, that's beyond my knowledge. I really don't know if alkaline water is good or bad for the dogs. Something you might want to check with your veterinarian about. Oh, okay. I thought you would know all about it. Uh, listen, all I know, all I know is that I've lived within my lifespan probably eighteen hundred to two thousand dogs and cats and pigs and chickens and ducks, and all of them have grown up on good, solid water. Many on New York City water. Okay, it's filtered, but it's still water. They've all been happy. They've all been healthy. They've all been successful. My feeling has always been: if it's not broken, why am I going to change it? I don't think there's any Anything wrong with the LA water, but filter water would be my preference. So that's what I would be doing. Hey, listen, Eric, I got to move on, but let me put you on hold and we're going to send Erica for her dog. She's giving the dog filtered water. I don't know what I would send her. So you know what? I'm going to send you a t shirt that says, None of my friends walk upright on its way to you, Erica, in Stevenson's Ranch. 866-870-KRLA, the phone number. Here's the scenario, okay? I get this all the time. You guys know you've been watching me and listening to me for many, many years. Many, many, many years, more than I want to remember. And over the years, I've seen a lot of people come up with great changes. Some of them have been very positive changes, more harnesses than collars, great thing. But sometimes we go a little bit too far. And I think sometimes by going a little bit too far, it's kind of like when we were told, you know, the, the, the antiseptic hand wash that everyone uses now. If you use too much of that, it's really not healthy for you because you need some of that bacteria for your body to fight it off. So I don't know about alkaline water, if it's better for a dog or cat. If someone's more knowledgeable about that than me, give me a call, 866-870-K. ROA. 866-870-5752. That is the way to get through. We are going to, we're definitely going to get to Irene. We're definitely going to get to Jay. We're definitely going to get to Sherry. So don't go anywhere. The phone number 866-870-KRLA. Still got lots. I got Lucy Pets Cats Incredible Cat Litter to give away. I got Mushroom Max to give away. Hemp Seed Oil to give away. More t-shirts, books, stain and order remover, food, hugs and kisses. Great time to call me. 866-870-5752. 866-870-5752. That is the way to get through. Let me go to Jonathan in North Hollywood. Hey, Jonathan, welcome to the Pet Show. Hello, Mr. Warren. How are you? I, I am doing super. How about yourself? I'm pretty good. Thank you for asking. Um, well, my question is, um, I gave my girlfriend a seven-month-old uh, female German Shepherd Rottweiler mix, and uh, we don't live together, but you know, every time I go visit her or even when you know her brothers come back from work uh, at the end of the day, she um she always tends to when she sees us she she tends to uh pull whoever's handling her and she jumps on us all the time i just want to know if that's normal or if there's some tips you can give me to probably work with her that way she can stop that yeah first of all in other words there's things you can do uh, and if you want to stop a dog from jumping the best thing you can do is absolutely nothing <laughs> listen to my i know that sounds hard but listen to me carefully here jonathan when a dog goes to jump, which is normal behavior for a dog, because what they're trying to do is make that facial contact. Very often, dogs will sniff each other around the mouth, around the face. They look at the eyes because it's all different kinds of information they gather from our face, our breath, the way we smell. So that's very often one of the reasons why dogs jump up. They're excited. They want to get up with that facial contact. So the dog's excited to see us, and we're yelling at the dog, no, get down, leave me alone. That's the creation of neurosis, okay? So sometimes the best thing to do is how old did you say the dog was, Jonathan? Uh, seven months old. Oh, he's a baby. We need to do some really good training with the dog. So when people come over and you have him on a leash and a harness and he goes towards him to jump, you can say sit, you can say stay. But in terms of jumping on you, what happens is when you walk in, if you react to the jumping, you're reinforcing that behavior. Sometimes the best things to do is just cross your arms and just walk away. He'll try to jump a few times, but realize he's not getting anywhere and he'll stop. That's the best way to resolve it in conjunction with some good, basic, solid training. Have you done any training whatsoever? 
No, we have not. Okay. They, yeah, I wish you would have started younger. What I'd like to do, Jonathan, and I think it's really important because I love the combination of the Rottweiler and the Shepherd. You know, those are two breeds I worked with extensively with foreign governments and, and many, many different organizations in Europe. And so I'm a big fan of the breed and the combination is amazing. However, very, very intelligent. And what you need to do is take that intelligence and get it focused in the right direction because it's just like a bright child. If you don't get the intelligence focused in a positive direction, they will come up with some way of getting attention and it may not be in a way that you want, i.e. jumping up on people. So there's two things. Number one, what I suggested, some basic training. Number two, ignoring. So what I'd like to do, if it's okay with you, Jonathan, I'd like to send you and whoever works with the dog a copy of how to get your dog to do what you want. This is my own book, okay? It was written many years ago, still a bestseller. And the reason I want you to have this book is because before you resolve an issue with a dog, you need to have some positive way to communicate with them. Right now, all this dog hears is, no, stop jumping, don't do it, you bother me, leave me alone, stop it, stop it, stop it. It makes the dog crazy. In fact, I often joke about this, I go into homes, I say the word no, and the dog comes thinking that's his name because that's what he hears so much. So I'd rather we focus on the positive, a lot of socializing. So I'm going to send you a copy of how to get your dog to do what you want. It'll take you from the day the dog walked into the house till 20 years down the road when you have to say that final goodbye, specific chapters on jumping, teaching how the dog how to, to walk on a leash without pulling, how to get along with other dogs. So I want you to follow it. Be patient. There's no reason this dog's not going to turn out to be the best dog in the world as long as you're patient with them. And if there's more than one person involved, Jonathan, just make sure that everyone is doing it exactly the same way. Does that help you out a bit there? Yes, you actually have. I mean, she does uh, follow basic commands like sit, uh, you know, uh, lay down. Yeah, yeah, but listen to, listen, listen to what you're saying, okay? It's like being okay. able to read and not have a book. In other words, if the dog knows how to sit and the dog knows how to stay, will the dog sit and stay while she's jumping up on people? No. So what's the point of having a dog that listens when there's no distractions around? Every dog is Rin Tin Tin and Lassie when the 11 o'clock news comes on and there's no distractions. Take them to the local dog park or a walk and they turn into Cujo. So it's important to start out with little distraction, establish a relationship in terms of educating your dog, and then gradually introducing different distractions till you have control of the dog or a way to communicate with the dog in a positive way and the book will take you through all of that. That makes total sense. Uh, quick question, would sure. this book also work when, when, uh, when we decide to go out and leave her alone in the house? Oh yeah, there's a whole uh, chapter specifically in the book on separation anxiety, absolutely. Are you the first owners of the dog, first guardians? Yes, we are. Has no one had the dog before you? No. How old was the dog when you got her? Uh, two months. Okay, so she was eight weeks old. She was separated, probably young from her litter. Might have been a large litter with that combination. I don't know. So she's probably having a little bit of separation anxiety. That'll be covered in the book. But if you don't want to wait till the book gets there, you can go to my website, uh, Jonathan, thepetshow.com. There's a great article in there specifically on separation anxiety. Sounds good, Mr. Warren. Thank you very much. Don't go in. Appreciate I'm going to put you on hold. The lovely Suzette's going to pick up, and we're going to send you a copy of How to Get Your Dog to Do What You Want. By If you want a copy of the book, by the way, it is available on Amazon, and it is available uh, on my website, thepetshow.com as well. Hey, the phone number here, 866-870-KRLA, 866-870-5752. Plenty of time for your calls. Lots of great stuff to give away. Still got some of the biggest prizes to give away. I got the Lucy Pets Cats Incredible Cat Litter. Have some more hugs and kisses. Lucy Pet Formers for Life Pet Food. Some more books. Author Suit Gold. Great time to call me. 866-870-KRLA, the phone number. A quick break, then right back to your phone calls. Here, 866-870-KRLA. 866-870-5752. bet my flag's going to be up flying this week. All right, let me get back to the busy phone lines right here on the show. We got great calls coming in. We got Sherry in Bakersfield, Jay in Van Nuys. Um, let me go to Sunland first, though, and Irene. Hey, Irene, welcome to the Pet Show. Oh, yes. Hi, Warren. How yes, I, I want Hi, I want to make an announcement that this um, start was starting Friday, yesterday, till 4th of July. Uh, they're giving dogs away at, with L.A. City shelters. Dogs are up for adoption free. They're not just giving dogs away, right? <laughs> Uh, well, I mean, uh, you just pay for the license, twenty dollars if you're in LA City, but if you're out, and and and, is the, the dog, and uh, do you know offhand if the city evaluates the people before they actually adopt the dog? 
Well, I, I don't think they evaluate um, with L.A. City. I don't think that, I just actually because a lot of good, good animal people are listening to your show. Yeah, and if you yeah that, listen, that if you, they will go there and call their neighbors and friends and get get a free dog there. There is two um, small dogs there. Uh, the owner is in the hospital, and uh, but they're available for adoption. Wait, what sh- what some, shelter? What shelter is that? Uh, I mean? East, East Valley. Oh, East Valley. Really okay. Lot, yeah, and there's some white poodles. Uh, maybe owners, um, probably maybe they're owned by somebody and maybe they still have to find the owner, but there's uh, a lot of good dogs there and with all of LA city. Well, that, listen, if, if you're looking for a pet, whether it be LA city, they obviously have free adoptions. I heard that earlier, free adoptions, I guess till the fourth, I don't know exactly when it ends. Um, yeah. but if you're looking for a friend, you're looking for a, a good pet, check out the shelters and bring one home. Yeah. And if it's not, just, yeah, sir. Go ahead. If it's yes. not, if it's not yeah. the city and shelter, it could be a rescue, could be a dog on the street. Let's oh. just get as many animals into homes as we possibly can. Oh, yeah, very good. Yeah, and also, when we want to find homes for these dogs that people want to adopt, uh, they uh, with the housing, that's another situation. L.A. Family Housing and the, this new housing they're building, we pass these um, measures, these initiatives to get housing for the homeless, low income, or just more housing. None of these are pet friendly. You have to go to a doctor to have like a companion animal. That's wrong. It needs to be pet friendly. Well, if our tax dollars are paid for new housing, it better be pet friendly. And I'm going to the city council because LA Family Housing, none of them are pet friendly. Here's, here's my feeling. They tried to do this in San Francisco and I believe they got part of it through. If mm-hmm. a rental, if a person owns rental housing and yeah. they're willing to rent to people with pets, they actually get a tax break from the city. Because it saves Very the city good. money because the dogs are adopted, the cats are adopted, and the the, re, the 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 landlord will actually get a tax break. So I think there's some Perfect. great things that can be done. And yeah, you know, I may wind up with the city council not too distant future yeah. myself. Who knows? Anyway, listen, I really got to move on. But how many Very pets good. do you have? Um, well, I have, have had four, but I have found um, some good homes for two of them. Uh, they're with my church, a new church I joined. And um, they wanted a female, so I. Um, yeah, but do you have any pets? Do you have any pets at the house right now? Oh uh, yeah, I have two right in front of me. Yeah. Okay, so here's what I'm gonna do. Let me, well, two dogs, two cats, two snakes, two goats. What do you have? Well, <laughs> I used to have horses and six dogs and all that, and goat and uh, goat, a goat and a rabbits, all that. But now it's different. Um, I just uh, I have um two dogs. I do have a cat that I rescued. It was in the street. It was a kitten. Now it's a cat, and I have a friend that that wants him. So uh, he's over there, but I visit. All right. So let me do this. Let me put you on hold. I want to send you something for the dogs that you have. They're rescue dogs. Let me just uh, get my thing to work here. Right. The, okay. I'm going to put you on hold and we are going to send you for your dogs. No, two dogs. Here. I'm going to send you some hemp seed oil for joints, hemp seed oil for joints from nature. Event. Okay. So that we're going to send it out to you. And I appreciate that phone call. 866-870-KRLA, the phone number. We are going to, let me go to Jay. Then we're going to go right to Sherry. Hey, Jay, welcome to the show. Well, oh, hi there, uh, Warren. Um, I have a cat. Which I it was saved it as a feral kitten. We've spoken before. And now, uh, I did get him neutered, which is, I guess, the last time I spoke to you about a month or so ago. Uh, he's uh, one year old now. Um, and the problem is, is because he had sprayed in the bedroom, uh, my wife won't let him in the bedrooms anymore. So every night we have to sh- uh, keep him out of the bedrooms. And he, he basically only has a couple of rooms to wander in. Well, 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 let me ask you a question. He sprayed in the bedroom a couple of times. How about resolving that problem and letting the cat back in the bedroom? Well, I don't have a problem with it uh, if I can resolve it. But the problem is, is that so I, it, he's at the the sprain has cut down quite a bit now. Now that he's been spayed, however, uh, you know, it's it's pretty pretty horrifying when you're asleep and all of a sudden, boom, <laughs> you get in the face with a with a with the odor. Yeah. So so in other words, here here's what I want you to do. First of all. You, you, you know, you have to clean up the areas where the cat is gone. What I would be doing okay. at this point is I would be doing putting down three or four different paper plates with just a little bit of the cat's food in it. I would be spreading that all around the room, number one. I would be giving the cat a lot of exercise before you go to sleep to get a lot of the energy out of him. So my, 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 my recommendation to you is, number one, 
get that area really cleaned up uh, with the uh, with the kids and pets stain and odor remover. That's number one. And number two, what you need to do is you and your wife need to spend more time when you're not going to sleep in the bedroom, just kind of hanging out in there. So this becomes more of a place where the cat is because the more you keep the cat out, when the cat comes in, the more he's going to want to claim the territory. So the more time you spend in there with the cat, the less apt he is to have accents. Put the food around, clean up with the kids and pets. That should resolve the issue for you. Oh, I mean, that's kind of what I thought because the cat was actually sleeping uh, in the bedroom with us at night. And then when this happened, when this started happening, it was like he was both. Yeah, well, I, I, listen, I understand. We, now he's kind of depressed. Of course he's depressed. Listen, I understand, I understand, you know, where your wife is coming from, but at the same time, with any member of the family, if they have a problem, you don't just kick them out, you resolve it. So my feeling is this is why the cat's doing it, is because he was kicked out after going once or twice, whatever it was, and now every time he gets in. But the more time he spends in there, puts some toys in there, some treats, some boxes, a lot of different things, the more that becomes his room, the less apt, the less apt he is to, uh, uh, to mark that territory. Uh, one more question, if you don't mind. I also have been using it. Uh, by the way, thank you for that uh, cat scent or catastic litter. That stuff was very good. I did run out of it. I need to order more. But in the meantime, I've been using this crystal cat litter, and I'm not sure the cat particularly likes it. You shouldn't be changing litter. First of all, you shouldn't be changing litter on the cat at all. Once you find a litter that the cat's real comfortable with and safe, like uh, the cat's incredible, that's what I recommend that you continue using. Don't change. Stick to the same litter. That could also be a reason why the cat is marking other parts of the house. But have you have any feedback though on that crystal litter? That have never heard of it. Have nothing. Don't know anything about it. The only litter I recommend and endorse is the Cats Incredible. Uh, so I'm not familiar with the crystal litter. There's so many different litters on the market. There's corn litter, this litter. It took me 30 some odd years to find a litter that I recommend and endorse, and Lucy Pet's Cats Incredible the one. So I would continue uh, using that. Well, this one has no clay in it. It's all crystal. Well, I would definitely, I will, listen, I would definitely recommend because I know exactly, and there's no borates, by the way, in Lucy Pet's Cat's Incredible. Borates are in most litters. In fact, they're banned in England, banned in Europe. They should be banned here. So just the safest litter to use is Lucy Pet's Cat's Incredible. Okay, well, thank you very much. Thank you, Jay. I noticed you had, I, I noticed you had a note here that you got a letter saying you can't get any more gifts. And, and let me tell you why. Basically, um, if you call often, um, we can only send out, because we want to be fair to everyone, we can only send out a gift to a person every four, five, or six months. We can't send them out if they happen to be lucky enough to get through on a weekly basis. But thank you and keep me posted. 866-870-KRLA, the phone number, 866-870-5752. By the way, great time to give me a call. Still got a Lots of great stuff to give away. Uh, you know, many of the items I give away are 25, 35, 40 bucks and more. So great time to give me a call. I'll answer your question and a great gift will be on its way to you. And come on, you guys know you lie to your dogs and cats. Why are you people afraid to admit it to me? I told you I lie to my dogs and cats sometimes. I say to Cisco, I'll be right back, sis, I promise. And I know I'm not going to be right back till 4 o'clock. So if I can admit it, admit it. Do you lie to your dogs and cats? Give me a call. And if you answer that question, maybe I'll send you a nice gift. 866-870-KRLA, the phone number, 866-870-5752. Quick break, then right back to your phone calls. Sherry, Sarah, Susan, Bill, we're going to get to your calls. Did you know that black cats can be either male or female? However, for some reason, for some reason, there are more male black cats than there are female black cats. This has been proven statistically, but there is no obvious genetic reason why it should be the case. But I love black cats. I mean, I've had many, many black cats in my life, but there are more male black cats than there are female black cats. 866-870-KRLA, the phone number, Bakersfield. Sherry, welcome to the Pet Show. Hi, thank you, Warren. I have a bit of an unusual question. I have a fabulous, about 85, 90 pound dog that has two best friends. Once an American, one is an American bulldog, the other one is a boxer. These three guys play so rough that my boy has had his scalp ripped, in, ripped open twice. Aggressively? How can we? Aggressively? Pardon me? Aggressively? Um, they play hard. Yeah, but you know, but you still, wait, wait, playing hard is one thing. Ripping open a scalp is something entirely different. How did that happen? Well, the boxer and my dog are kind of like kangaroos. They stand up on their hind legs and grab each other. And I think it's the nail that catches his scalp. Okay, but they, but they actually get along with each other? 
Oh, fabulous. Okay, now oh, let, me ask you, let me ask you a question. Now, I've had a few bloody noses from best friends too, you know. But let me, ask you, let me ask you the big question. Is it only when the three of them are together or if the two of them are together, the same thing takes place? Same thing if it's only the two of them. How about if you're walking them? Um, well, they don't walk nice together because all they want to do is play. They walk nice individually, but not Together. See, that's, that's where I would be focused, okay? They need to react in a positive way, in a good way, in a helpful way when they're together. So if you and your friend, whoever has the other dogs, can take them for a walk together, and this way they get to know each other on neutral territory, even though they're a pain in the butt going after each other, at least if they're away from a home or someone's home, at least at that point they have smells of other dogs, opossums, raccoons, and whatever. The more time they spend with each other on neutral territory, the less apt they are to be so uh, enthralled with each other when they get to a location. So I think one of the more important things you can do is before you bring them together is make sure they get a little socialization away from where they're going to be. And number two, you increase the exercise factor a little bit as well. That's going to make all the difference in the world. I mean, if they're playing and one gets hurt playfully, hey, you know, that's what happens. They're big dogs. It, it happens. I don't like the fact that this, the, the, the head was, was cut open. That kind of bothers me a little bit. So I'm really going to recommend that what you do is take them as often as you can. Take them on hikes. Take them on walks away from someone's yard. Then bring them back into someone's yard. Let them play there. But make sure in that yard there's a lot of interesting things, 100 tennis balls, you know, uh, a kiddie pool for them to jump in. They need to be a little bit out of focus with each other. I think their focus on each other is so strong right now. That's all they can think about is playing with each other rather than enjoying just being in the backyard and playing with you or other items as well. Does that make sense to you? It does. Uh, the The other thing, well, we were walking all together this morning. Oh, great. And and then we walk together every day. And then we come to one of the yards so they can play. And that's when they go completely berserk. Then, then the walk... I can't, go ahead. I can't put toys in the backyard because my dog will not share so in other words, in other words, what you're doing is you're basing the relationship that these dogs have on how your dog is reacting rather than take the time to resolve the way your dog is reacting. If your dog is possessive over toys in the backyard, then what I would do is I would throw 10 toys back there at the same time to avoid the possessiveness when other dogs come over. I would give them the opportunity to play at someone else's yard where your dog is not going to be so possessive at this point. But little by little, every time they're together and every time it ends in a positive note, we've made a little bit of an accomplishment. Now, they've been doing this for a while, so it's not going to happen overnight. But literally, I've had 30 dogs at one time that have come off the streets out of fighting situations, and it's taken me time. They don't all of a sudden become Rin Tin Tin and Lassie. It takes me time to walk them on neutral territory, get them to understand each other. If they're really being obnoxious in the backyard, what I would do is put them both on a leash and a harness and do some basic training and then let them off again. If they're still overreacting, back on the leash and harness. They learn through association. All of those things can make a difference. The worst thing that you can do right now is say no, stop it and start yelling at them because the anxiety and the assertiveness on your part is going to bring out more agitation on their part. Right. I'm just kind of, I'm sitting here with him right now and he's got his scalp sewed up. Yeah. God, what a so, shame. And, and, it's, it was... and it's not um it's not anger. It's just play. They yeah, play but listen, so if you had if you had two kids playing with each other and one kid had a hammer and hit the other kid over the head, <laughs> you'd figure out another way for them to play. Wouldn't you maybe take the hammer away? So what I'm suggesting at this point is give them more time on neutral territory. Make sure when they do go to your backyard, every time they go there, there's always new things and there's plenty of things, so there's no need for possessiveness. Make sure they have the opportunity to go to someone else's yard. But most important right now is when the dogs are being obnoxious with each other, that's when the leash and the harness has to come out. And that's when you have to establish positive authority. What you're doing right now is, okay. I'm sure, saying, no, stop it, knock it off, wait till daddy comes home. All of those things right. just create more energy, more excitement. It's like two guys fighting. So the best thing to do is not a timeout. I don't believe in timeouts for dogs, but a leash and a harness, five minutes of training to get their control, calm them down, let them loose again. If they're still being overly aggressive, put them back on until they realize their freedom is based on their behavior. Now, let me ask you something. I bought one of those uh, silent uh, silent noise makers that we can't hear, but they can. <laughs> Go ahead. And when I press that button, they stop. 
but then in you know 10 15 seconds they're right back running at each you know what i'm going to do here's what i want you to do rather than that whistle okay that only they can hear here's what i'm going to do i want you to follow the advice i just gave you okay and call, i will call me back in a couple of months. i'm gonna put you on hold and i'm actually going to send you one of the little air horns we had made up specifically for situations like this or if you just take your dog for a walk so if the dogs are reacting that way don't say a word Tap the air horn. Don't even let them know it's coming from you. It's kind of like God correct them. They will get the idea and you should be okay. And I do appreciate that phone call. I'm sorry, but that's, you know, when, when you have a dog that's really hurt, even if it's play, it's not acceptable behavior, not acceptable play. We have to kind of change that a little bit. That's my suggestion of making the backyard a bit more interesting. Hey, the phone number here, 866-870-KROA. Uh, Bill, Sherry, Sarah, don't go anywhere. A quick break, then right back to your phone calls. Week, I'm Warren Eckstein, listening to The Pet Show. Hey, here's a reminder before I get to the phone lines here. You all know I get off the air here at 1 o'clock. I go across the hall. I do my national and my Canadian show. Exactly the same type of show. The difference is the calls come from all over the United States and Canada. You guys will be the first ones calling in. So let me give you the number. If I don't get to your call, you're out driving around, you're, you're busy, whatever, you're doing your gardening, but you want to call, you have a question about your pet, the phone number for the national show, and by the way, it's the same type of show. I give away the same gifts on that show that I do here, that phone number, and you can start calling that number at 1 o'clock. Please be patient. It goes through Washington, D.C. Here's the toll-free number. You can start at 1 o'clock, 877 725 Eight two five five eight seven 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 two five eight two five five. 877-725-8255. You can start calling that number at one o'clock. I'll answer your questions there and send you a great gift as well. But right now it's time to go to Susan in San Pedro. Hey, Susan, welcome to the pet show. Hi. Hi, Warren. Thanks for taking my call. Hey, it's my pleasure. I was um, I'm asking about a, a dog that um, is about eight years old and has been having some urinary leaking. And my question was, um, he's been tested for um, for a um, bacterial infection. She doesn't have any infection. Uh, but do dogs uh, need like a, there's a medication like for women after menopause for bladder training? You know there are yeah there are medications on the market specifically made for dogs that have certain type of leakage, but it would depend on what it is. I mean, is it the medication to pre prevent that, or is there something else inside the dog that's causing it? How often would you say he's having these accidents or this leakage? Uh, just a little bit here and there. It's, it's not a lot. Is there any specific time of day? Is it morning? Is it evening? Is it when you come home or when he's excited? It doesn't seem to be. Just kind of sporadic. And how much is leaking out? Uh, oh, gosh. Just, just kind of like dribbles here and there. Yeah. What does your vet say about it? Yeah. Um, hasn't really just kind of thought maybe it's something due to age. but. How old uh, is your dog? Eight years old. Eight years old. You know, unless there's – what type of dog is it? Big dog, small dog, medium? Uh, Dog, yeah, eight thing. years old. I don't think the leakage is that. There's got to be something else. I would definitely go back to your vet, question him a little bit more. There's some great medications on the market, maybe even get a second opinion at this point. Um, but it also could be the fact that the dog is leaking, that they, even though you clean up that scent, that the scent is still around in the house, actually encouraging him a little bit. But it doesn't right. sound, it, doesn't, it sounds to me like he doesn't even know he's leaking. Is that right? Uh, probably, yeah. 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 I don't think it's nothing intentional, I don't think. Yeah, so let, let's, do, let's do this, okay? There are some great medications on the market I've been hearing about. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'd like you to go get a second opinion from another veterinarian. It's, it's only an eight-year-old dog. I'm going to send you a coupon for Kids and Pets Stain and Odor Remover. I want you to pick that up. Just clean up the areas where the dog is gone. Um, take them out more frequently. You might want to, if you can get some urine sample from the dog and bring that to the vet, I think that would be helpful as well. Okay, and also, also regarding this, like I was wondering, do you, um, is there anything you recommend for cracked paw pads? For what now? Cracked paw pads, like her paw pads have got cracks in them. Oh, the, yeah, yeah there's, a, there's a product on the market. It's called Musher's Secret. Musher's Secret. Musher, yeah, it's what they use. It's what they use on sled dogs. It's called oh. Mush, Musher's Secret. You can go online and get it, and I think that would help with the cracks. Okay, wonderful. Thank you very much. Hey, thank you. Don't go anywhere. We're going to put you on hold. What did I said I was going to send you? I forgot what I was going to send you. I have a, a coupon for the... Oh, there you go. I'm putting you on hold, and the lovely Suzette's going to pick up, and a coupon for kids and pet stain and odor remover will be on its way to you. A quick break, then right back to your phone call, Sarah and Bill. Again, here's the number for the network show. If you're driving around, if you're busy, if you're shopping, whatever you're doing, you can call the network show starting at 1 o'clock. That phone number, 877 725 
8255, the same type of show. You get the same voice because it's me and I give away the same gifts. We are back on the pet show on this 4th of July week. I'm Warren Eckstein. Hey, Bill and Sarah, I'm not going to have time to take your call, so please write this number down. I'll make sure you're my true first call is on my national show. And that calls for anyone out there that didn't get through that phone number, 877-725-8255. Start calling at 1 o'clock. Uh, please be patient. It goes into Washington, D.C., then it comes back to my studios here. But I do answer the questions. They are the same type of questions. Uh, they come from all over the country. You guys will be first. And I do give away the same gifts on uh, the national and uh, Canadian show as I do here. Uh, again, that phone number is 877-725-8255. 877-725-8255. If you've not checking out, checked out my website recently, please go there. We do a lot of stuff. There are a lot of information, a lot of the items hundreds of articles. It's thepetshow.com, thepetshow.com. Again, the phone number for the national show, 877-725-8255, 877-725-8255. Right now, though, I want you to stay tuned right here. Coming up on KRLA is Living Pain-Free with Dr. Mark Darrow, my good friend Nita. Until next week, give all your pets a big hug and a kiss for you. One between the ears for me. I'm Warren Exxon. You've been listening to The Pet Show.